In this video, I'm going to show you the one thing you need to do if you want to lose weight without counting calories. What's up guys, Carlo McAfinlack here from NewbieFitnessAcademy.com. I help busy professionals look good shirtless so they can feel more confident and get the most out of their lives. Okay, so you want to lose weight without counting calories. How do you do it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. What I'm about to share with you is something that I get all my private coaching clients to do regularly and they've all gotten some amazing results. So you know it works. It's something that I also do regularly. In fact, it's so effective, I've never seen it not work. I know that's a double negative, but you get the point. It's that effective. So what exactly is it? Well, it's pretty simple. Instead of eating your regular three meals a day or even six meals a day for some people, and I can't even wrap my head around how some people do that, like that just sounds like the most inconvenient thing on the planet. But that's usually conventional wisdom, right? Eating three meals a day and then we eat snacks in between or we're always nibbling on something all day. And we do this because it's supposed to keep your metabolism high, right? But did you know that there's actually no scientific evidence that eating six meals a day is somehow more beneficial for you? None. Zero. Zip. Nil. Nothing. The only people that benefit from that way of eating are food companies. We're talking serious dollars here, like billions of dollars. In fact, some researchers even concluded that eating six meals a day actually made people want to eat more. Studies have shown that many people don't feel satisfied following a small meal, which can then cause them to overeat later. And you've been there before. Physiologically, eating small but frequently can leave you wanting more because you never sit down to have a full meal. And if you're trying to lose weight, how could you possibly think that eating as many as six meals a day is a great idea? It's not. And what has conventional wisdom when it comes to eating led us to? That's right, we have a full-blown obesity epidemic. One in three Americans are considered obese and two out of three are overweight. And Canada isn't that far off when it comes to those numbers. Some researchers are predicting that by the year 2030, 75% of Americans are going to be overweight. That's scary stuff. So that's conventional diet wisdom for you. Not so great. In fact, it sucks. Now, what I'm about to tell you goes against the grain, but I promise you it works. And I'm going to explain why and use real science and research to back it up. So stay with me. Instead of eating three meals or six meals a day, you're only going to eat one big meal a day. That's right, once. One big meal to rule them all. I usually have this one big meal during dinner time. That way, I go to bed feeling full and satiated. The rest of the time, I don't worry about what I eat. I don't even think about it. I know a lot of you guys watching this video right now are all up in arms, but let me explain. I think the biggest thing sticking out right now is, oh, isn't breakfast the most important meal of the day? And the short answer is no. Again, there's no scientific evidence to back that up. Did you think that our ancestors back in our hunter-gatherer days woke up every morning and thought to themselves, oh, I better eat breakfast? No, there was no breakfast cereal or toast or granola bars back then. They ate when food was available and sometimes they would go days without it. Like, let's use some common sense here for a second. What do you think will happen if you ate one big meal instead of three or even six meals? That's right, you're gonna lose weight, a lot of weight. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. But if you want a scientific explanation about why this type of eating is so effective when it comes to losing weight, here it is. Every time you eat, assuming that it's a blend of carbs, fat, and protein, your pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin. Insulin, if you've never heard of it before, is a very important hormone in your body. It's the hormone that controls your body weight. I could create an entire video or even write an entire book all about it. It's that important. But all you need to know for now is that when your insulin goes up, that tells your body to start storing energy. You're in fat storage mode. And when you're storing fat, you can't access your fat stores for energy. You just can't. It's either you're in fat storage mode or you're in fat burning mode. It's one or the other. That's just how your body works. Another way to look at this is insulin blocks fat burning. And this is an important concept. So assuming that you eat your three meals and then you eat snacks in between those meals, like a granola bar between breakfast and lunch, and then let's assume that you go to the gym after work and you drink pre-workout or Gatorade, and then you eat a small snack before you go to bed. You've now put yourself in a position where your insulin levels stay high all day long. Refined carbs and sugar is what spikes insulin the most, by the way. So you're in fat storage mode from the moment you wake up until bedtime. And that's why people get fat. 
Now, let's flip the coin and let's look at it the other way. Every time you don't eat, your insulin levels go down. And that's when we get to access our body fat for energy. It's like your body flips the fat burning switch. Another way to look at this is low insulin levels equals fat burning. And we automatically do this when we sleep. When we sleep, we're not eating. Our insulin levels naturally goes down and we start using some of that stored energy so we don't die in our sleep. And your body can really only be in two states. You can either be fed or fasted. And the word breakfast is derived from the word break fast. In case you didn't know, you're breaking your overnight fast. And that's the problem with the conventional way of eating. The moment you break your fast by eating breakfast and repeating the pattern of eating that I mentioned earlier, when you're eating all day, we've now put ourselves in a position where we're in fat storage mode literally all day. And we only get to take a break from eating when we sleep for eight hours, if you sleep like a normal person. So we're in fat storage mode for 16 hours and we only get into fat burning mode for eight hours. You don't need to be a mathematician to figure out that that way of eating isn't gonna work if you wanna lose weight. Listen, even if you just flip those hours where you're eating for 8 hours and you're fasting for 16, you're automatically going to lose weight. An example of this is having an eating window between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. So basically, just skipping breakfast. I guarantee you, you'll lose weight without counting calories if you just drink black coffee in the morning and skip breakfast. Now, if you want to maximize your results even more, then you're going to minimize that eating window even further. And that's where we enter the one meal a day territory. Again, let's just use some simple math here. If we limit our eating window to just one hour, you allow your insulin levels to become really low all day, and you have 23 hours to allow your body to burn fat for energy. You literally become a fat burning machine. This way of eating is often referred to as the OMAD diet, short for one meal a day. By the way, that one meal needs to be a nice, nutritious, fully satiating meal for this to work. It doesn't give you the green light to hit up your local all-you-can-eat buffet. No. Now, a big resistance that some people might have about doing OMAD is the myth that skipping meals is bad for you. And it's going to put your body into starvation mode and you're going to start withering away. And the short answer is no. The longest recorded fast, in case you didn't know, is 382 days. Over a year. It was medically supervised and he lost 276 pounds. He went from 456 to 180 pounds living off of water and multivitamins. I know, pretty wild, right? So you're not going to start withering away. Actually, it's quite the opposite. A lot of amazing things happen to your body if you just eat one meal a day. Here's a few notable things. It reduces insulin resistance by lowering your blood sugar levels. And I talked about this earlier, how important insulin is when it comes to controlling your weight. The OMAD diet also reduces inflammation because you're giving your body a break from digesting food all the time. It improves blood pressure, triglycerides, and cholesterol levels. That's a good thing. It improves brain function, and a lot of people talk about the mental clarity that comes with just eating one meal a day, which in itself is a good enough reason, I think, why you should try it. It boosts your metabolism, and if you're trying to lose weight, increasing your metabolism is one of the best things you can do. Eating one meal a day also increases human growth hormone levels, which by the way is what prevents your muscles from withering away. I know that's what a lot of the anti-fasting crowd throw out there all the time, and that you're gonna lose muscle when you fast, which is just absolutely inaccurate. You have about 20,000 calories worth of energy in the form of stored fat in your body, and more if you're overweight. It's not just there for looks. Why on earth would your body then use muscle for energy instead? unless you're at 4% body fat, and most people aren't at 4%. You don't need to worry about your body eating away at your muscles. And from an evolutionary standpoint, we would not have survived as a species from our hunter-gatherer days if we started to lose muscle when we fast. In fact, eating just once or twice a day, or sometimes not eating for a few days when food wasn't available, was normal thousands of years ago. Feast and famine, or in this case, feast and fasting. We did not evolve as a species to eat six meals a day. The human body is well equipped to handle short periods without food. Eating one meal a day could also delay aging, extend longevity, and again, this is because of the increase in growth hormones in your body. That's why some people refer to it as the real fountain of youth. The OMAD diet could even help with cancer prevention. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, but this most likely has something to do with something called autophagy, which literally means self-eating. 
Think of it as a cleanse on a cellular level. Your body gets rid of old cells and old proteins and makes new ones in the process. It's the ultimate cleanse. So no, you don't need to go on an expensive juice cleanse and drink $10 cold pressed juice every day to cleanse your body. Your body does it for you for free. There, I just saved you a lot of money. But autophagy only happens when you take a break from eating. And that's how I want you to think about it if you're just eating one meal a day. You're simply taking a break from eating. Now, here are some more practical benefits of eating one meal a day. Number one, you save so much money. If we do some simple math here, if you regularly eat three meals a day, then all of a sudden you just start eating one, that's a 67% reduction on your food cost. Even if that one meal is a little bit bigger than your regular meal, you're still saving tons of money. If you're someone who likes to eat six meals a day, you're gonna be saving a fortune. You're welcome. Benefit number two, and most people don't realize this, it frees up so much time in your hands. According to research, we make around 200 food-related decisions every day. That sounds like a lot of energy expended just on food. And if you reduce your meals to just one a day, that simplifies your life real fast. Benefit number three is it's flexible. Let's say you have a family brunch. No big deal. You simply go back to your regular one meal a day schedule the next day. And listen, even if you just follow this way of eating, let's say every other day, you're still going to lose tons of weight. It's all about minimizing the insulin response in our bodies. By the way, there's definitely a way to eat to maximize your fat loss if you're just eating one meal a day. And I'm going to link to my video about that topic somewhere at the top here. Eating one meal a day works with all diets, by the way. So if you're vegan or a vegetarian, you don't have to change the way you eat. You just have to change when you eat. It's the same if you're doing paleo or keto or carnivore. It works with all those diets. Pretty cool, right? I could keep going with this, but those are some of the big benefits that you should know. Now, who should and shouldn't do the OMAD diet? Eating just once a day is generally safe for everyone if you're in good health. Just consult with your doctor before you try it if you're not sure. If you're pregnant or you're underweight or if you're taking blood sugar medication or you're chronically stressed or if you're still a teenager, then it's not a good idea to do it. Otherwise, if you're in perfectly good health, then you're good to go. And that, my friends, is how you lose weight without counting calories. It's simple and unbelievably effective. Try it and let me know how it works. I mean, you've got nothing to lose, right? Okay, the next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat to maximize your results? What's the next step? Well, if you're someone who's been struggling with losing weight for years, you know, you've tried every diet under the sun, you've cut the fat, you've gone on a calorie deficit diet, you work out every day, but you just can't seem to lose weight, or maybe you're feeling stuck because you've hit a weight loss plateau and you can't seem to get out of it, you feel like life is just passing you by, you're missing out on opportunities, and you realize that it's time to get one-on-one -on -one professional help, then feel free to reach out to me. Head on over to my website, newbiefitnessacademy.com forward slash coaching, read through the page and the success stories and fill out the application form for a free consultation. If I think that we're a good fit, then I'll personally reach out to you directly. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every Friday. And hey, leave me a comment below if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions about this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the comment section. Virtual high five.